Welcome. This is what is happening on the Sunday day, the 4th of August 2011. Solar activity is very high. We've had two major flares and three major coronal mass ejections. So we have a lot to cover today. The high level of activity becomes apparent when you look at the GOES X-ray plot. You can see that we've had 11 C flares and two M flares since we talked yesterday. One of those M flares was an M6, the other one was an M9. And as one might expect, the X-ray background has increased significantly. We still only have three numbered regions on the disk. Region 1260 is about to go over the northwest limb and we'll lose it in the next day or so. Region 1261 continues its rapid development. And Region 1263, although it's the largest region with the strongest spots, still enigmatically sits there very stably and doesn't produce very much activity. We do have two unnumbered regions. The one in the northeast is still there and is still as yet unnumbered. Somebody's asleep at the switch. And there's a new region very faint with a few small spots in the southeast as well. Now let's take a look at the evolution of those regions over the last 48 hours. First the sunspot movie from the HMI instrument on the Solar Dynamics Observatory and particularly here concentrate on region 1261. Similarly in the magnetic movie that follows, one of the things that you can see with the 1261 is that the magnetic field is all mixed up and that is a good indicator for the possibility of flares. For the transition region and coronal movies I'm going to follow the following sequence. I'll show a full disk movie of the last 48 hours, then a more detailed movie of the M6 flare, uh, and uh, then a more detailed movie of the M9 flare, and I'm just going to let them play and let you enjoy them because I think they are absolutely exquisite. Wasn't that absolutely spectacular? And didn't that an M9 flare remind you somewhat of that flare that occurred about a month ago on the East Limb where there was all that beautiful dark ejecta? You see, sort of see the same thing uh, from above that we saw from the side before. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Now let's take a look at the coronal mass ejection. First the data from the Soho Lasco instrument. First of all the small C2 data, then the larger field of view C3 data. You can see the remnants of the mass ejection from the M6 flare yesterday and the more, more recent M9 flare. Plus there's also an ejection uh, toward the very end of the movie that is on the far side of the sun, which you can see from the stereo head and stereo behind data, which is shown here. 
The status of the solar wind can be derived from the ACE data. You can see that the temperature and density of the solar wind has been bouncing around over the, all over the place, which is typical of one of these low speed solar wind streams. There is no sign of that coronal mass ejection that occurred on the 2nd, but it is due to arrive here in the next day. It was a relatively slow event. The coronal mass ejection that followed it is a much faster event, and in fact may well catch up with it. Which will really give the Earth a double whammy. The high energy electron flux has remained very high, and as you can see we've had two more proton events and this, the last one, this M9, has produced a very significant proton event and you can see the flux in all three energy ranges is up by a couple of orders of magnitude from the base level. And in fact you may have noticed in the coronagraph data there was a lot of speckles all over the images those are the protons hitting the uh, detector in the SOHO instrument. The auroral zone and KP index remain very quiet for this period but I suspect that will change in the next 24 hours. So in summary then, the X-ray background has risen to the B7 level, the sunspot number has dropped to 66, the radio sun intensity is at 120 solar flux units, but exceeded 150 solar flux units earlier today. The solar wind speed is down to 360 kilometers per second, with a density of much less than one proton per cubic centimeter, and geospace conditions are rated very quiet. My forecast for the next 24 hours is the chance of getting C flares is very high, the chance of M flares remains good, and X flares is distinctly possible. The sunspot number will probably edge a bit lower as we lose a couple of regions. The chances of getting coronal mass ejections are very good. The solar wind speed will probably edge a little bit higher. But, and there's a chance of a geomagnetic storm in the next 24 hours. The composite coronal image shows that the region in the northeast is now fully rotated onto the disk. And so we're not going to be getting any more uh, spots from that region. So that's been quite disappointing. And the next good regions are in several days still behind the northeast limb. The simulation in the background here shows that we have now two CME fronts heading towards us. However, uh, I'm going to be away for the next few days and so Alex Young will be substituting for me. So he's going to get all the fun while I'm away. Anyhow, uh, that's it for today. Keep safe. Bye for now.